Man, let me tell you something, man. Man, let me tell you something, man. Black Panther. Man, I'm so hyped for. Man, I'm so hyped for Black Panther. I was, I was sold on Black Panther already, right? Like I was already sold on Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman, amazing Black Panther in Captain America: Civil War. But then I saw Michael B. Jordan was in the movie, and I'm just like, sold done I'm, my my butt is in the seat because my general rule when it comes to actors is like I will watch anything if Michael B Jordan is in it it could be a movie of Michael B Jordan watching paint peel on a wall and I would be like that was riveting it was amazing <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Black Panther is finally getting his due, right? And the funny thing about Black Panther is he's like one of the most criminally underrated heroes in the entirety of the Marvel Universe. He's always overlooked because he's kind of been part of the Avengers, kind of not. I mean, he was an Avenger, but he's always like the one guy who's overlooked, right? Here's a crazy thing. Wakanda in Marvel Comics is the richest and the most technologically advanced country in the world. It's crazy how advanced it is. And a lot of people don't know that. Like the technology in Wakanda puts the rest of the world to shame. No one is on the same level as Wakanda. But Wakanda's wealth and Wakanda's resources all come from vibranium. And the way the Wakanda's timeline played out was that it was just a territory in like Africa. It's you know somewhere along the line. That was really it. It was just a place out there somewhere. And then eventually, a uh, giant meteorite of vibranium like crashed in Wakanda. It was discovered by like Bashinga and a handful of other people I think it was. And then Bashinga basically formed the Black Panther clan. Now the Black Panther clan derives their whole purpose in protecting the, you know, vibranium, the great mound, I think is what it's called, but protecting the vibranium and then they use that as their source of revenue. Like they kind of keep it hidden and every once in a while like they'll sell off a little piece of it for like a ridiculous amount of money. But Wakanda is the only place where you can find Wakandan vibranium. There's Antarctic vibranium but it's not as good. It's an anti-metal. It just cuts through virtually anything. But Wakandan vibranium has the ability to amplify magical properties, and that's why it's so sought after by, like, everybody. And so because of that, like, it makes Wakanda worth a fortune. Uh, but the whole Black Panther clan just, like, derives themselves from their purpose of protecting the Great Mound, and they get their powers from the Panther God. Now, here's the crazy thing. Back in the day, the Panther God was, like, just an Egyptian god. It was a god that was just worshipped by the Egyptians, and then somehow or another, and I don't really think it's even explained, but somehow or another, uh, people in Wakanda, and in you know, really in the, the area of Africa outside of Egypt, um, started going through and worshiping bass, and then eventually the panther clan derived their powers from bass, and they have to go through like these rituals and eat the heart-shaped herb and so on and so forth to gain their abilities. Anyway, there's been all kinds of changes. Like Wakanda's waxed and waned over the years. Really the most significant moment in Wakanda's history uh, came in two forms. The first was a story called Doom War, which is amazing. And the second one is Avengers vs. X-Men. Doom War, was a story where like Victor Von Doom was like, okay, uh, I have magical powers and Vibranium has the ability to amplify magical powers. If I take all the Vibranium in Wakanda, it'll amplify my magical power to like an infinite degree. And I'm Dr. Doom, I do bad stuff because you know, my, I'm Dr. Doom, like the name just screams bad guy. And so I'm gonna go do bad guy stuff. And so what happened is that in the city of Wakanda, Black Panther had taken the stance where he was like, okay, it's time for us to step out into the world. It's time for us to play more of a role in the earthly landscape in the you know in society as a whole we have to stop being reclusive and so because of this there was like this fundamentalist like crazy group that wanted to remain totally isolated from the rest of the world and they basically like instigated a coup and like they ran Black Panther and his sister Shuri out of the country. Now at the time, Black Panther had been injured, I think, or something along the lines, and his sister Shuri had taken over the role of Black Panther for him. Like T'Challa had been injured and so she had become the new Black Panther, but they were both basically ousted. And so Dr. Doom, it turns out, was the one who basically instigated this coup by backing the group that wanted to take over Wakanda. So this leads into this great big huge conflict, right? And I mean like everybody gets called in. Like the X-Men, the Avengers, the whole nine yards like the fantastic four like everybody who's anybody it's just like off to wakanda like we got to go there at the end of the whole conflict dude oh my god it's so insane at the end of the whole conflict no one can stop victor von doom right like he's just like dr doom's just got like an exorbitant amount of power i mean it's 
He's got like all the Wakanda or all the all the vibranium that exists in Wakanda. His power is insane. So Black Panther's like, I'm gonna do the only thing I can do. I'm gonna render all vibranium across the world totally inert. So all vibranium is rendered useless. It's just a giant hunk of rock. Wakanda loses everything. I mean, it loses it all. Like it's it's absolutely nuts. Compound that with the fact that during the story Avengers versus X Men, uh, Namor the Submariner had like attacked Wakanda and basically obliterated the city. Like T'Challa was ousted as Black Panther and like Shuri took his place. And so it was it was one of the craziest things ever. But during Hickman's run, during Hickman's time when he was writing Avengers and New Avengers, he introduced a whole bunch of stuff into like the Wakanda landscape. And one of the things that he introduced is that Black Panther is the king of the dead, quote unquote. Now it was really just kind of like a terminology. I mean he could like commune with all the other former Black Panthers who had died in battle or died of old age, whatever the case may be, but he could talk to all of his ancestors. But it became really important during the events of Secret Wars. And it was one of the coolest things ever because Secret Wars happens, the multiverse collapses. God, I'm going through so much stuff right now. The multiverse collapses. All right, God King Doom or Dr. Doom is just like, I'm taking the power of the Beyonders and making myself God, whatever. He creates battle world. Conflict ensues. Anyway, Black Panther and a handful of others survive the collapse of the multiverse and Dr. Stephen Strange grabbed the, grabbed the uh, Infinity Gauntlet and was like, hey, if Dr. Doom kills me, which he did, like, here's the Infinity Gauntlet. Use that to defeat Dr. Doom. It didn't work because he was just too powerful, but like, Black Panther got the Infinity Gauntlet. And it was the coolest thing, because like there's this amazing image where he's just like, oh, and he's got like the Infinity Gauntlet in his hand, and he's just like, Brow, you know? It's like the coolest thing ever. And so he ends up going to like the Marvel Zombies universe, you know, and like he gathers all the Marvel Zombies. And, like Namor the Submariner's with him, and Namor's like, dude, they're Marvel Zombies, man. Like you can't, can, you can't make them do what they want, or you can't make them do what you want. He's like, don't forget, man, I'm the king of the dead. And like he controls, dude, it's the craziest thing ever. There's like this crazy battle going on for Battle World, right? Like this crazy world, like everybody's battling Victor Von Doom. In comes T'Challa, all right, in comes Black Panther, opens this portal, and it's just like an army of Marvel zombies just come pouring out. T'Challa's got like the Infinity Gauntlet, and he's like, oh, power, like it's the craziest thing ever. It's one of the coolest moments in the history of Marvel Comics. The point that I'm making here is Black Panther is badass. Like he's one of the coolest guys ever. He's also like the third smartest man on the planet. But uh oh my god, I'm so hyped for this movie. Man, I'm so hyped for this. Man, I'm so hyped for this movie, man. I think it's going to be one of the greatest movies ever. I think it's going to be one of the coolest movies that we get to see with the character of Black Panther. Um because he's finally getting his due, right? I mean, on a more serious note, you know, on a more serious note, calming down. Calming down. Let's calm down, everybody. Let's let's relax. Let's calm down. Let's breathe. <laughs> on a more serious note, Black Panther has been one of the most integral and important parts of like comic book legacy, right? Of like comic book history. Black Panther paved the way for Luke Cage, for Falcon, Sam Wilson, for Storm, for a lot of the African American community within Marvel Comics. Um, but it was also this idea that he has intrinsically played a significant role throughout Marvel Comics, just in the Marvel Comics continuity, his intelligence, his technology his resources, communing with the Panther God, all those different things. What this does is it brings this wholly new legacy into the realm of Marvel Comics. Not even the sense of just his contributions to African American culture, but take like, take like the Panther God Bast, right? In, in Doctor Strange, that was as close as we got to like godlike beings. And Doctor Strange is probably where we're gonna start seeing like cosmic entities, right? Like they referenced the Living Tribunal in, uh, in, in Doctor Strange, they were like, like Mordo was like, this is the staff of the Living Tribunal. And everybody in the theater was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was the coolest thing ever. It was one of the coolest reactions ever. Everybody started freaking out. But um, but anyway, like they referenced the Living Tribunal, the cosmic entities. In Marvel Comics, you have cosmic entities and then you have gods. And gods take a multitude of different forms. You have the Sky Fathers who were like the gods that you imagine around the world right now. So like the Judeo-Christian god and like... Vishnu and like Odin and Zeus, those are like the Sky Fathers, all right? It's like this council of like modern day gods that hang out. But then you've got like a ton of other gods and stuff like that. Bast is one of them, it's a whole different thing. And what this does is it brings in all kinds of stuff. Like now they can start doing things like in Thor, they can say, ha, huh, little do you know, uh, Freya is not the mother of Thor, it's actually, um, damn, what is her name? She's like Mother Earth, Gaia, that's what it is. Gaia is like the mother of Thor, like Mother Earth basically, the godly representation of like Earth spirit or something along those lines, I don't remember. Go planet! Uh, it's one of those weird things that, <laughs> that goes on in Marvel Comics, but there's a lot of different things that they can do with, with the Marvel landscape now, just by virtue of what Black Panther is gonna introduce. 
but it it changes everything now because what this is going to do, assuming they do it right, which I have full faith that Marvel will do it right, it'll make Black Panther one of the most important characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because of his resources and his intelligence. Those are gonna be the things that are gonna make him so significant. Now, how smart they're gonna make him, I don't know because in Captain America Civil War, there wasn't really a whole lot of room to focus on his intelligence because he was more of like, you know, a revenge character, right? He's just like, I am going to kill the Winter Soldier because, you know, I've been tricked into believing that he's the one that killed my dad. It made sense. That was the confine of his character. It wasn't focusing on his intelligence or anything like that. But this can do that because Black Panther is trained at like all the best schools, like some of the best schools in the world. Like he's got all kinds of degrees and so on and so forth. And he's super smart in terms of what he's capable of. The point is this. Black Panther is going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm really excited. I think it's going to be one of the coolest movies that comes out in quite some time. But anyway, guys, uh, my little spiel, I'm just, I'm really, really excited. I'm really hyped. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. <laughs> and I will catch you guys later. Peace.